In previous years at LTX, Jake's contribution to the like incredible experiences that we've created have been playing racing games on the 16K and 10K ultra wide gaming setups. And frankly, they were smash hits. Good job, Jake. But this year, for our racing experience, we're not content to settle for bezels or even virtual cars. Uh -uh. This is next level, my friends. What if instead of a video game car on a screen, we could drive actual cars in VR? I mean, yeah, okay, they're, they're RC cars, but like, come on, close enough, right? Sick, right? That sounds pretty cool. Just like our sponsor, Ridge Wallet. Oh, my, my. Ridge Wallet is the sleek way to keep wallet bulge down with its compact frame and it offers RFID blocking inner plates. Use code LTT to save 10% and get free worldwide shipping at the link below. Let's break this down. So first, we've got to figure out how to control our steering servo here with a steering wheel, as well as figuring out how to control our ESC, or electronic speed controller, with a throttle and a brake pedal. And then there's the video stuff, like how do we even mount it, what are we going to use? Like, there's a lot of questions here. Yeah, uh, furthermore, getting that video feed to the headset is another issue. So we need something that's high quality enough that you can really see where you're going through it, and also low latency enough that you don't just want to immediately throw up. We're probably getting ahead of ourselves a little bit though, because before we can do any of that stuff, we need to settle on a platform or a car. There's a lot of options out there, obviously, but we need something that's not crazy expensive because, you know, you're kind of cheap. We need something that's going to be reliable with good battery life, because this is going to be seven plus hours for two, two days. days. Yeah. And it needs to be not too big or too fast, because both of those things are going to contribute to motion sickness. Yeah, if you're like ripping around, like, like, like go that fast, like four inches from the ground. We want to keep our vomit quota for LTX pretty low. You're going to be done. Now, of course, it also still needs to be big enough to house all the first person view hardware and, I mean, ideally be fun to play with when we're just done this project, right? Yeah. There we go. So it turns out there was a bit of a miscommunication. Um, Jake and I define large uh, a little bit differently. So for better or for worse, we ended up with a Traxxas slash two wheel drive, which would be perfect for this pro project if it was, oh, I don't know, about 30% smaller and um, maybe, a, okay, okay, okay. Maybe about a fifth of the speed. It's fun though. Yeah. We, that's fine, we can, we can roll with this. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, one thing I didn't show you is it has training mode, which cuts the throttle in half. You know, Jake's not so bad, eh? We're on the same wavelength here, eh? All right, it's, it's still pretty quick, okay? Yeah, it's still <laughs> probably a little faster than we wanted. Sorry, David. Getting our steering working with a USB steering wheel was the first real challenge. Now we knew thanks to fellow YouTuber RC Sparks that there was a steering wheel that would work really well for this setup, thanks to its simple design, the Thrustmaster Ferrari racing wheel. And thankfully, Thrustmaster was able to supply us with several of them to tinker with, and it looks like with some minor modifications, we should be in pretty good shape. So with the RC transmitter and the steering wheel opened up, this actually looks relatively straightforward-ish. Hopefully. Knock on wood. So the transmitter just has a potentiometer, so you can see the one behind the steering wheel right here. And then it's got a second one for the throttle. So that's pretty cool. So if the resistance is the same between this and, and right here we go, the potentiometer here, and well, the other one would be in the pedals. We'll deal with that later. We should be able to just move the wires over and yeah, they're different. So. We're dealing with 10 kilo ohm potentiometers in the steering wheel, and then just five. Five. Five kilo ohm. Not yeah, sorry. Five. Yeah, five kilo ohm for be... the transmitter. Okay, so hopefully then what we can do is find some five kilo ohm pots 
that are a similar size to what's already in the steering wheel because we'd rather not have to make adapters or something just to mount the pot so we can turn the stem on it when we turn the wheel. After a quick trip to the local electronics store, Jake returned with something reminiscent of what we previously had, although we could tell some minor modifications were going to be necessary. For the pedals, we weren't able to locally source flat-sided potentiometers in the resistance that we needed. So while you could probably just drill out the hole in these little gears, we decided to instead 3D print some replacements. As for the steering wheel, the potentiometer was really close to fitting, but some cutting and sanding was required to get it nice and snug in there. We went with a super professional hot glue mount for now, but by the time we roll this out at LTX, it'll probably be upgraded to JB Weld. For wiring, we followed along as closely as we could with RC Sparks' guide, and it turned out pretty well. Although we did have to swap our pedals from left to right as they were reversed. Okay, okay. so theoretically, if you fire that up, Turn the steering wheel. Ah! No way! Okay, well that's the easy one. Okay. Oh, you saw it. You saw it twitch it's, there. It's definitely trying. We should try the calibration thing. Whoa, whoa, okay, you're gonna break it. So what we're trying to do right now is calibrate the pedals because theoretically you can set up what I guess it would be the receiver. Yeah, the speed control, you ready? Yeah, okay, ready? Oh, uh, did you already press it? No. Nope. Oh, sorry. I... Well, it's moving at least, so we got the throttle. Is that enough to get it to go? Oh, not very fast. <laughs> this might be better though. Uh, it's a little slow. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes, yeehaw! I feel like we have less throw than we did in the controller. Because right, these because are different you've got potentiometers. that trigger. So the ones in the controller are 180 degrees, right? So you have yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then these ones are like 270. Yeah. So what if we cut this? Give Just ourselves... cut the stoppers out. So while Jake chops up the pedal assembly, it's time to talk about the first person view video setup. Now we browsed a ton of different tutorials and forums for information about what the best individual components were for a setup like that. And the conclusion is that it's kind of like building a PC except rather than what CPU, GPU, and RAM you should buy, it's which video transmitter, receiver, camera, antennas, headset, and batteries. And there's a lot less community consensus on the benefits of certain parts over others. So at this point, it felt like throwing the company credit card at an RC shop and validating a bunch of different stuff ourselves might have been our only choice. That is, until we found out that DJI makes a pretty much plug-and-play first-person view camera called OcuSync, which when paired with their racing goggles, supposedly provides a super low latency and high quality video feed. You know, I gotta say, as much as I was genuinely looking forward to cobbling something together and tinkering with it, uh, given that we're gonna be running this at a live event with thousands of attendees, I'm actually pretty happy that we found a pre-made solution. Um, one point DJI failed to mention to us, however, is that, see this right here is the receiver and camera module, it actually needs active cooling, otherwise it can overheat. I mean, I guess that makes sense, given that this thing is designed to be used on open air, like racing drones, but uh, anyway, it's fine because we can just simulate that airflow with a little five volt knock to a fan, a 3D printed bracket, and then some of these old Enzotech uh, heat sinks. Okay, so now that Jake is pretty much done with the hack job behind me, I guess it's time for me to try and find some places to- Oh man, to... through the grill? Well, look, it's not, I know it's not gonna be perfect today. <laughs> it's, I, I think about it. What That's we're gonna like... have to do is cut some holes in this top, but so yeah, we don't mangle later. it for LTX, we're just gonna temporarily mount it. Yes. Because for LTX, we want it to be very pretty. And pretty is not our specialty. And like, think about it. It's not like when you sit in your car, you don't have your dash in front of the windshield. Like, we'll be able to see well enough. <laughs> look, it's not. It's gonna be like right in front. Like, look. <laughs> I know. Look, if I could put it up so a little bit higher right now, this is the windshield right here, right? So this is like a yeah. super, super car or something? E sure. Oh, hot glue, oof. I'm just putting a little bit. Okay. 
Well, it has a bracket, you know. Well, now it's hot glued. Hopefully right side up, too. <laughs> you can flip it. Okay. All right. There we go. Oh, that so was quick. That's on there. Oh, please don't hot glue that. Well, just a little. Oh, no. Just a dab. Okay, I forgive you for choosing this car. That's expensive. It's because not, it's, it's not actually that bad. working pretty darn well. Uh, yeah, easy for you to say. Did you pay for it? No, nope, but neither did you. Yes, I did. Well, Linus Media Group Incorporated did. Who's that? Woo, 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 woo. Okay, so now... The battery. We need the battery, yep. I'm not gonna hot glue yeah, that. Yeah, don't. This is a lithium polymer battery. I would strongly recommend not hot gluing one of these anywhere. <laughs> you gotta rip it off, just tears the cell in half. So it's a massive fire. Yeah, yeah. Mm, spicy. Hey. Hey, nice, all right. So the cooling fan's going. Is it super wide angle? Yeah, actually, holy crap. I can see David right now. Really? From where you are. All right. 720p right now. So this is, the, I think, the highest quality setting. It looks pretty good. Like actually. the lowest latency setting, you mean? Or? No, it's the highest quality one. Oh, really? So the highest latency. Oh, OK. I, How's your nausea? Um, I mean, the fact that you're moving isn't helping. Huh. But uh, do you want to put it on the ground? I want to try it. No, right, I think I, think I get to try the spoils of my labor. Where are the pedals? <laughs> This is gonna be kind of interesting. Watch me fall over. Okay, uh, all right. A, is the hot soldering iron hot? No, okay. I good. feel like I'm driving a Jeep. Like a, oh man, no way. Whoa, oh my gosh. Dude, the latency is so low. Uh, so we think it's possible that we can insert an SD card right here in the OcuSync and record straight to this. So you guys will see the full quality. <laughs> Isn't it sick? Hey, Jake, what's up? Dude, this is so awesome. Woo! So cool. The graphics, the graphics, man. It's IRL. Man, I could get like way better at this with some practice. All right, all right, all right. We can wrap this video. I can go, I can go do lunch, yeah. Okay, so there's definitely still some progress for us to make before we can deploy this at LTX, but like, wow, this is genuinely really awesome. I know that this one was a little bit sparse on the details, but the truth is that this was just proof of concept. We've still got some things to iron out, so the next video is gonna be the detailed guide for how you guys could do this with similar gear at home, uh, trying out the track, and then of course, we're gonna be teasing the full experience that you'll be able to have at LTX 2019. <sighs> Speaking of experiences, my sponsor segues are an experience and a half, are they not? With private internet access, you can hide your true IP address and you can bypass geo restrictions and censorship because it makes you appear as though you are somewhere else. You can use it on up to five devices at once with a single account, and it's got all kinds of great features, including their internet kill switch, if your VPN gets disconnected involuntarily, their DNS leak protection, Mace, their own built-in malware blocker, and all the different tunables that you can adjust, like their various levels of encryption. It's available for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and as a Chrome extension, and you can check it out at lmg.gg slash PIA Linus 2. We're gonna have that linked below. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Maybe don't buy the stuff we featured in this video just yet because we still have a lot to learn, but uh, next time, next time we'll be ready. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.